morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I would like to talk about um, a problem shared. It's a problem halved. Why would I like to talk about that? Because I think we've reached a point in our industry where we really do have to work together. We have to work together as agencies, as technology companies, as businesses. Because we own a heritage, we own an a set of knowledge which is actually quite unique. And, and it's a knowledge that I think we should be very proud of owning. A knowledge of how to look at geography in, in a really quite intimate way and how to make that information relevant to citizens across a broad range of requirements. And that's not necessarily going to be driven by a, an overtly commercial business trying to solve a search problem or a business trying to get you to the latest restaurant on time. The motivations of organizations like ours and pretty much everybody in this room are actually quite unique, and we should celebrate those. Audit Survey is, is the National Mapping Agency. We're, we're an odd beast. We're a mixture of a, a government agency. We, we generate commercial income from licensing our data. But at the heart of what we do is we provide one of the core information assets for Great Britain. We've got about 220 surveyors. We fly about five aircraft. We make about 20 to 30,000 feature changes a day to the NASA map, digital map of Great Britain, which is one of the world's largest structured database. It has nearly 500 million objects. It's dealing with petabytes of data, vector data, not raster data. And so we've had to really operate for years at a very challenging sort of information scale. But this is, to me, one of my most important slides, I think. And, and the reason I've been an Ordnance Survey for 17 years now, I came out of a US technology company, actually. And it is about geospatial being at the heart of our society, fundamentally driving outcomes that make people's lives better, safer, more secure. It's about handling things like the environment. It's about handling transport systems. And Britain's a very congested country, 60 million people living in a, in a, in a country the size of smaller than Texas. And a city that, and a country that is changing, you know, demographically changing uh, significantly, certainly in the last few years. And, and those, those changes create tensions in, in a country. And, and we've seen that with the debate around where we sit in, in Europe. And, and this is about people's uncertainty. This isn't necessarily about politicians. This is about people's uncertainty. And the great thing about geospatial data is it does give us some certainty about what the world is, how we measure it, how we take information from it. And it also defines fundamental things about what we own, how secure we can, we can feel in that. But it does come at a cost. This data is not cheap. It's not cheap to capture. We, we talk a lot about new crowdsourced data sets. We talk about enabling platforms that allow the data to be processed. But this is still an expensive operation. We spend around about $100 million a year on collecting data and processing data. We spend about 20 to 30 million dollars a year on the infrastructure, the, the technology, the enterprise systems that, that support that. So, so this is actually quite um, challenging uh, economics to be dealing with. How can we really move the dial here? Rather than incrementally make changes, how can we shift, you know, really a number of gears? How can we automate harder than we've ever tried before? How can we innovate faster than we've ever tried before? And partnerships and automation, I mean, automation is critical, but partnerships are essential. It's about having trusted partnerships, both with companies you work with, like Esri, but also with your partners across government and with the citizens. It's about them feeling comfortable in what we're doing. But it's also about taking an end-to-end -end enterprise approach. And technology is in there. I can't help it. I'm a techie geek. And, and, and so we've spent a lot of time looking at how we can leverage cloud, serverless computing, so we can get the cost of the compute right down. And we've got cost of compute down literally 100 times now cheaper than when we were having to put out our own sort of infrastructure, our own um, cloud sort of um, data centers. And, and, and these things are important. I'm going to explain why they're important as, as we go forward. But in Esri, we've been working with partnership with them now for about five, six years in detail. And, we, and we've tried to address some specific issues of cost. And in the last year, these are some of the improvements we've made and operationalized. We've reduced our production costs using aircraft, by around about $60 per, per kilometer. So we fly this next year probably 100,000 kilometers a year. So we're trying to fly GB every two years. We do about three at the moment. So saving $80 a kilometer when you're doing 100,000 kilometers is, is really interesting. And that's the full cost of flying, processing, production, and supply. So it's the front end, not supplying, the front end cost. 
But more importantly, when we look at our supply chain and how we operate, we have about, as I say, 200 surveyors. We've probably got about another 150 production staff in GB. We've got nearly 1,000 production staff working in India. And one of the challenges about production when you're producing vector data from image data is actually to identify the change. So we focus a lot on change identification tools, which means when we put a block of work out now into our supply chain, instead of taking 40 days for that block of work to have been identified the change, for them to capture the change, we can now do it in two days. And that's through integrating the workflow tools and interflating the systems that um, we've been developing on. We're using very specific edit tools now because we're handling so many changes that our features are sort of um, live edited. It's almost like people in India, people in the UK could, could be working on the data at the same time. And we used to have a problem with conflicts that when data was coming back into the database, maybe it had been taken out by somebody else or there are multiple edits. And we had to have this huge conflict system where we managed all the conflicts to make sure that what went into the database was, was, was the true view. We've reduced that now down to 20%. Why those conflicts are still there is that we have some features that are very large and cost many other structured features in the database. But what's important here is that these, this, this data is available daily. So when we make those changes today and we put them into the database, the next evening, or that evening, later in the morning, I should say, two in the morning, they're available to our land registry. So this is real-time, large-scale mapping supply. Our customers take it about every six weeks because of the volume of the change that we're dealing with, but it is actually transacting now a large-scale map at a daily scale. And the other way that we've really focused, and this has been a huge success, is full automation of all of our small and medium-scale vector and raster maps. So this is literally a one-button press now. I do want a big red button, and we can go, generalizing now, bang. And and that execution spins up automatically all the virtual machines on Azure, scales up all the databases, runs full automation from large scale to a range of derived scales, 10,000, 20,000, fully automatically for three fully automated national raster sets plus a GML set. This still takes 10 days because we're moving huge amounts of data. Can you imagine that we're sort of generalizing 500 million objects into structured data at different scales? But it is fully automated completely now. Um, and that requires great technology, great partnership working, but it also requires quite a lot of know-how. And many of the agencies around here, the mapping agencies, have been working in this space for decades, and it's been the holy grail. I'm really proud this year that we've been able to deliver that now as a true production workflow, which means, in principle, our master map of Great Britain can be supplied at every scale, essentially, potentially every 10 days. It's a bit challenging to do that, so we're probably doing it about every 30, 60 days. But in principle, as we put more compute, more scale, we're actually being able to produce maps. And here's an example of that. So on the left is a full national refresh, 2019. On the right is 2019 national refresh. And you can see there a complete new housing development and, and the change only update. So, Again, fully automated processes. And this gives us the ability to provide mapping literally instantaneously to our customers and give them access in a way that even just two years ago, some of these products took two years to do a national refresh. They you know, took a long time with cartographic, manual cartographic you know, terms, with people finishing, with text placement, with, with collapsing carriageways, all the complex things about generalization. And I've just created a horrible term, a virtuous vicious circle. We can collect more data. That data needs more processing. That processing allows us to answer more questions, but then ask more questions. And when we ask those more questions, we need more data. And that more data wants more processing. And that gives us new insights. And then we want to ask more questions. And then we want, and we just go around this wheel. And we've been going around this wheel for, for centuries now. It's nothing new. It goes all the way back to the first census back in sort of uh, 1067, when we went out and collected the census of Great Britain to work out who owned what land and how we could make sure the rich people kept their land. <laughs> um, nothing changes. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we do need to be cautious. I mean, the future is, we, we can create myths and we can create stories about the future. And sometimes you have to punch the balloon. I'm a hiker, I'm walking, so I'm just going to finish on a slide that means a lot to me, is that sometimes it can look challenging, but sometimes people do occasionally play tricks on you. So <laughs> thank you very much.